This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hi everyone and welcome. It's a brand new week on 10 to the top. So we have cleared the board. We've wiped the slate clean with a damp rag. We've had two 65s in the last month. Uh, Let's see if we can keep that momentum going. We've had some great scorers out there. Some very, very knowledgeable people have played 10 to the top. So good luck. Get involved. You know the details. I'm not going to uh, repeat myself. But thank you very much for choosing the 10 to the top podcast. BBC Radio 2. 10 to the top. Last week, Friday, uh, was finished off before Radio 2 in the park by Busted, who played 10 to the top. Interesting stuff. Lovely lads. And they were absolutely magnificent this weekend in the park. But let's meet our first contestant of the week, Donna Wilson in Kendall. Hi, Donna. Good morning. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Oh, excellent stuff. Now, you and I have something in common, but I think you're better at it than me. You love playing badminton. You're in two badminton teams. Yeah, all ready to go for the for the new season. Hang on, I'm confused. There's a badminton season. Surely you don't need a season with badminton. You just play indoors in a gym. No, the, there is a season when you play in the team. It starts in September and goes on right through till next March when we have all the matches. So I didn't realise you played. Well, I, 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 say, I use that term very loosely. Donna. Uh, we have a net in the back garden and it's something that we like doing as a family. Uh, we mainly play keepy uppies. Oh, right, OK. It is a sport that's losing popularity, definitely. Is it really? Um, yeah, definitely. And it's just not glamorous enough and potentially people can't earn much money playing badminton. So. Well, it's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, when you hmm. put those things into the equation. But it is a great hand eye coordination sports and this is controversial because I know a lot of our listeners play tennis I think it's more difficult to play it than tennis because you've got to be so reactive on a relatively big court yeah, that is true I think people say when you play badminton they just think of you pit patting around over the net but it is a really fast game and it, you know you have to have quick reactions and definitely we absolutely love badminton in our house. It's probably the only sport that we play as a collective because none of the girls play golf, which I adore. They have no interest whatsoever in the American football. And when England are on the telly, they're too busy talking about whatever's going available online, shopping. Right, well, that's fair enough. I can understand that. Yeah. Oh, stop it, Donna. I thought you were on my side. <laughs> right, anyway, enough about that. How do you usually do on 10 to the top? Um... I'm pleased if I can answer five questions, but I've never actually uh, accumulated my score. I never got a count. I'm just delighted if I can answer something. All right. Uh, it's dead easy. It's an accumulative scale of scoring, which means first question's worth one point, second one's worth two, blah, 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 so on and so on. Yeah. And then if you get a question wrong, we tumble down the ladder and the next question will be worth one point. You can play a joker, which doubles the amount of points available on that question. So are you ready? Donna Wilson. I think so, Vernon, yes. To the top on Radio 2. Name the Danish act who made her UK chart debut in 1994 with the number one song Saturday Night. Uh, Oh my goodness. Wigfield. Oh, for goodness sake. I remember when that came out and after the summer of 94, everyone, everyone who'd been aware that year was doing Saturday Night Wigfield dance. Yes, absolutely. And I can't can't believe I couldn't get that name. Don't worry, you'll get this next one, which means we'll just start again. Okay. For one point, which Black Lace hit from August 1984 invited us to push pineapple, shake the tree and grind coffee? Agadoo! Yay! There she Woo! is. She's back in the room. <laughs> it was I could do for two points. It's your first clip in 2001. This band from Portland in Oregon scored their biggest UK hit with the tune you're about to hear. Who are the band? No, 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 I can't sing. Oh, you're going to kick yourself. 
the Dandy Warhols. Oh, flipping heck, yes. You're going to have yes, Wakefield yes, yes. and Dandy Warhols nightmares tonight. I am, I am for sure. Oh, never mind. Sure. Right, this one's worth a point. Come on, Donna. Yeah. Who sang about the kids in America on her 1981 chart debut? Kim Wilde. Yeah, well done. One point after this peaked at number two, Kim went on to have more top 40 hits in the 80s than any other British solo female performer that decade, with 17 in total. Boom. Okay. Right, this one's worth two points. If You Leave Me Now was a 1976 number one by a band with the same name as which US city? Chicago. It was indeed, yeah, Chicago. For three points, Unfinished Sympathy in 1991 was the first of 11 top 40 entries for which Bristol-based group? Not the verb, no. No, No. and I know why you said the verb, because the video for Massive Attack's Unfinished Sympathy is very similar to the Verve's Bittersweet Symphony, where they're both, the lead singers, are walking down a street. OK, well, I didn't know that information, but oh. it, it was just a guess. <laughs> it was Massive Attack, unfortunately. Yeah, OK. Uh, all right, for one point, which top three hit from 2011 by the Goo Goo Dolls has the same title as a type of flowering plant as well as a part of the human eye. Iris. Yes! We've got a point for two points. In what year did Dusty Springfield score a top ten hit with the song Son of a Preacher Man? 68. It was 1969. Oh, my goodness! Oh, unlucky. (laughs) Oh, how annoying. Unlucky. (laughs) For a point, it's your second clip. This week, 24 years ago, this dance act were at number one in the charts. Who are they? We're going to Ibiza. Back to the island. We're gonna have a party. In the Mediterranean Sea. Is it Aqua? Donna, it's the Venga Boys. Oh, for goodness sake. I thought you would have got that. Oh, so did I. On the score sheet, I put one point for Venga Boys. Oh. Next question, two points. I'm oh. going to scribble the two out and I'm going to have to write a one. However, we're going to play a joker, so it is actually worth two points. Oh, is it the last question? It's the last question. Well done for keeping up. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's relief. Right, here we go. Oh, yeah, we've had a right laugh, though. Here we go. Right, let's see if we can get these two points on the board. The song First Time was a 1988 power ballad that spent three weeks at number one for Robin Who. Miss, I've no idea. It was Robin Beck. All right, Donnie, you scored five points. Oh, OK. All right. Well, we'll see if Sharon Hatton in Doncaster can beat that. If she can, you get the coffee mug. If she can't, you get the smart speaker. So we'll find out what's going to happen after this. The 90s was a decade packed with incredible music from start to finish. Channel. It was full of showbiz stories. We were flying around so much that I'd have to wait until I got off the plane. Someone would speak to me and I'd know what country I was in. BBC Sounds of the 90s. On Radio 2. Get your weekly fix of nostalgia. Available now on the BBC Sounds app. BBC Radio 2. 10 to the top. A relatively low score from Donna, so let's see if Sharon Hatton in sunny Doncaster can beat that score to take home the smart speaker. Hiya, Sharon. Hiya, Vernon. You're teaching yourself Spanish. For trying, yeah. All right, well, let's start again then. Let's start again. Hang on, stay there one second. BBC Radio 2, 10 to the top. 
Hola, bienvenido a Sharon Hatton en Doncaster. <risa> Hola, Vernon, ¿cómo estás? Uh, muy bueno. <risa> Very good. What made you want to learn to speak Spanish? It was during COVID and I thought, well, you know what it was like. And I thought, mm. well, I'll have a go at it. We've been on holiday a few times to Spain and I thought, yeah, I'll have a dabble. Yeah, good. Uh, you love Peter Kerr. He won't stop to show for you when uh, you came in late. Yeah, that was a nightmare. We went to Blackpool to go and see Peter Kerr. Uh, there was about six or eight of us. And when we approached the venue, there was nobody about. You sort of doubt yourself, thinking, have I got the right night and one thing and another. Anyway, we walked in and he'd already started. He was on stage. Oh. And so our seats were like the third row from the front, right in the centre. So, you know, when they get the torches out and they're showing you down the aisles and everybody from our row had to stand up to let us in and he was halfway <laughs> through telling his jokes and he just stopped, looked at his watch and he was like, what time do you call this? So, yeah. That's so, Peter. Yeah. Right, how do you do on 10 to the top? It varies. Normally, um, if we get a break in the office, there's a few of us sit around and do it, and it varies. So are you ready? I am. In 1981, which family group asked, can you feel it, on their top ten single? Oh, um, say cool in the gang. The Jacksons. Oh, great. That's all right, because uh, Donna got her first question wrong as well. So, for a point, this is your first clip. This week in 1973, this glam rock group were back at the top of the charts for the second time that year. Following up, See My Baby Jive. Who are there? Listen to this. No idea. Oh, they're very popular at Christmas. Wizard. Next one is worth a point. Who spent a fortnight at number one in 1996 with Return of the Mac? Mark Morrison. We have a point. We are up and running. It was Mark Morrison. In 1979, Shine a Little Love and The Diary of Horace Wimp were two of the four top ten singles that year for which group? No, I don't know, Vernon. It was ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra. For a point, give me the four-word title of the 1989 song that saw Sidney Youngblood with his biggest hit. If only I could... Yes, it is. Yeah, if only I could. Do, do, yeah. do. For Top two song. points. Yeah, it was a great song. For two points. C'est la vie, Roller Coaster, and To You I Belong were all number one hits for Bewitched, but in which year? 2006. It was 1998. Oh, my word. <laughs> for a point. Who made his chart debut in 2007 with the top three singles, Stars in Their Eyes? Oh, I can't think of him. It was just Jack. I wouldn't have got that. For a point, this is your second clip. Joanne Catherall from the Human League is celebrating her birthday today. Here she is on a huge 1983 hit by the group. But what's the song title, please, Sharon? If it seems a little time is needed Decisions to be made The good advice of friends are needed The best of plans mislaid Just looking for Is it the mirror man? 
No, it's not. It's a good guess, though. That was a very good guess. It was fascination. Here is your next question for a point. On their top five tune in 1993, Green Jelly told the story of Three Little What? Pigs. Yes, it is. Three Little Pigs. Well done. <laughs> Perfect. Right, this last question. It was worth two, but we've got to play a joker, which means it's now worth four. <laughs> so it's come down to the last question. If you get this right, you've won the smart speaker. If you get okay. it wrong, you are taking home the coffee mug. So good luck. Thank you. What type of insect was also the title of a top three hit in 2001 for the band Crazy Town? Ants. It was Butterfly. Oh, you scored three points. Oh, what a nightmare. Sharon, commiserations. Yeah, no problem. It's been lovely to speak to you. Yeah, and you too. And yeah. uh, enjoy the coffee mug. Put that pride of place on your shelf. I will do. Well done, Donna. Oh, my goodness. Five points gets you the smart speaker. Congratulations. <laughs> right, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, Can't good stuff. That. Oh, well done. Well done. You see, you thought you'd done terribly, but actually you did all right. You got five points, which beats three, of course. Oh, well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Well, it'll put a bone in your stride going into the week. Yes, absolutely. And if you want to play it, all you've got to do is get in touch via the WhatsApp 08000 288 That's the communication application which you can find in your application store, whichever one you use. Or you can email us, send to the top, at bbc.co.uk. It's a brand new week. The high score so far is five from Donna. Can you beat it? Come and play. 10 to the top on Radio 2. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts.